You are watching William Patterson University Television. Welcome back to the desk. The 2017 World Series is deadlocked at one game apiece between the Astros and the Dodgers. But first, Sam will break down the latest headlines. The Hank Aaron Award was presented on Wednesday with two very deserving recipients. John Carlos Stanton and his 59 home runs this year was the recipient for the National League. He became only the ninth player to win the award multiple times. For the American League, Jose Altuve took home the medal, hitting 347 and winning his third batting title. Altuve and the Astros currently fight for their first World Series title. After weeks of speculation, Alex Cora has officially been announced the new Red Sox manager. Cora, who is the current bench coach of the Houston Astros, signed a three-year deal with the team option for 2021. The former player will start his new journey at, with his old team after the conclusion of the World Series. Tony La Russa is out of the Arizona Diamondbacks front office. La Russa has served as their baseball chief officer from 2015 to 2016. They bumped him down to chief baseball analyst last season before finally cutting ties following their elimination from the NLDS. The Diamondbacks do not intend to refill the role he has served in. Thanks, Sam. The New York Mets have a new man at the head of the helm. We're going to bring in Jake Bailey to give us the, the latest on our managerial hiring. Mickey Calloway is a storyline this week as he becomes the Mets' new head coach going into the new season. Mickey Calloway became the Cleveland Indians pitching coach in 2013, and since then they've had a Cy Young Award winner in 2014 in Corey Kluber, and in 2017 the Indians had an AL best of 102 wins. The Indians in that season led the major leagues in ERA, strikeouts, they've given up the least amount of walks and the least amount of home runs. Safe to say their pitching staff has been dominant. As for the Mets, the Mets were 70-92 and 92 last season, finishing fourth in the East. Noah Syndergaard, Jacob deGrom, and Matt Harvey are headliners to that team's roster. And in 2017, the ERA for the team was third worst in the league at a 5.01. Opponents' batting averages were 273. And they gave up the fourth amount of walks in the league. So the struggles there could be helped by Mickey Callaway. I'm Jacob Bailey, and this is WP Sports. Thanks, Jake. As the Mets embark on their new era with Callaway behind the driver's seat, we'll bring in our correspondent, Joe Rea and Jeff Lombardi, to give us the latest. Guys? Thank you, Chris. Reports surfaced yesterday morning that Joe Girardi and the Yankees will be parting ways. Girardi's contract ended after this 2017 season and speculation of his return was not imminent. His big blunder in Game 2 of the ALDS raised questions about his ability to manage and he was abruptly booed when the team returned home for Game 3. After going up three games to two in the ALCS, the Yankees would lose the next two to the Astros and would fail to make the World Series. A state from, statement from Joe Girardi read, With a heavy heart I come to you because the Yankees have decided not to bring me back. I'd like to thank the Steinbrenner family for believing in me and giving me this wonderful opportunity. So, Jeff, no manager in the past decade has had more wins than Joe Girardi. He has the best winning percentage, and he has the fifth most wins ever as a Yankees skipper. So did this firing come as a surprise to you, or did you see it coming? I think it's definitely surprising. I would have said that if Girardi was not going to come back to the team for the 2018 season, that it would have been on his own terms. He mentioned in the postgame after the ALCS loss that he was going to check in with his family and make sure that, that they wanted him to continue doing this. So usually that kind of hints that he's uh, you know, thinking about whether it's right for him and his family to come back. So I definitely think that it came as a shock. Now the Yankees can go in two different directions. They can get a popular name that sells headlines, or they can get a low-key guy that just goes by the book. You joked about Binder Joe, and that's what the Yankee fans didn't want. What direction do you think they're going to go in? I think it would be smart for the Yankees to stay in-house. I think they have three candidates that will definitely serve the job well, number one being Tony Pena. He's been around the organization for a long time. He has a Latino influence with a lot of the young players being a Latino heritage. There's also Rob Thompson. He's been with the organization for 28 years. And there's Al Perjuki, who has been the AAA coach, who coached a lot of these guys in the minors, so he would definitely be a good fit. So are there any more names that you think would come to mind, or are those the top names that you believe would be right for the Yankees organization? I think it would be right to stay in-house, honestly, um, because with the familiar with the young guys, I think familiarity is, is a big key for them taking the next step. But I can guarantee you this, that the next manager won't be making the $4 million salary a year that Girardi had. So the Mets decide to go in a younger direction, signing a 42-year-old Mickey Calloway to take over for a 70-year-old Terry Collins. They hired Calloway after only one interview, which is odd. Usually clubs will bring candidates back for at least a second interview, but reports claim that they loved him from the start and spent the rest of their time convincing him 
to come to New York. So do you think now with Joe Girardi on the market, they regret pulling the trigger so early with Callaway? I wouldn't say that. I say once you find your, your guy, that like the Mets found their guy in Callaway, I think it was right for them to pursue him. He has the experience dealing with pitchers, and I think that's key because the Mets have built their, their team around pitching. So I think it would be a great fit for the Mets, regardless of who's out there on the market. Now, with Callaway going to the Indians, the pitching staff dramatically improved since his arrival. Do you think that they'll be able to help the Mets' delicate rotation this year? I think it's definitely smart for them, like I, like I mentioned, to bring in a guy who has the pitching background because a lot of times you have coaches that are former catchers and they, you know, catcher and pitchers have a good relationship, but they might not understand it the way Callaway has. He had a Cy Young Award winner in Kluber. He's about to win another Cy Young Award this year, so I think his expertise will definitely help the team. Well, in the midst of all of this, there is a World Series going on and a damn good one, too. Let's take a look at the highlights. The ALCS MVP Justin Verlander on the hill for the Astros. Astros, Dodgers, game two in L.A., bottom of the sixth inning, one to one. Corey Seager just added to the World Series roster after missing the NLCS, his first home run of the postseason, 3-1 ball game. Top eight, Alex Brigman at the plate. Yasiel Puig in right field can't get it. It's off just the tip of his mitt. And you can see the frustration from Puig throwing his glove after missing that one. Alex Brigman makes it to second. He'll eventually make it all the way over to third. Carlos Correa at the plate. He pokes one into center field. And he makes this a one-run ball game, 3-2. to two. Kenley Jansen is going to be on for the save in a 3-2 ball game. But Marvin Gonzalez puts an end to that. His first hit of the series, his first postseason home run in his career. And he makes it a big one, 3-3. Three, three. We head to the extras. Top of the 10th, Jose Altuve, the batting champion. He sends one out of here, 4-3 ball game. Very next batter, Carlos Correa. Altuve, Carrera, back to back, 5-3 ball game. Bottom 10, Yasiel Puig at the plate. And he says, hold on, wait a minute. He makes this a one-run ball game, 5-4. A couple batters later, Foresight in scoring position. Kiki Hernandez at the plate. He pokes one into right field. And Foresight comes around to score, and just like that, we're right back where we started, a 5-5 ball game. Top of the 11th, George Springer with a runner on. He makes this a 7-5 ball game, and the Astros are back on top. The Dodgers tack on another in the 11th, but we can't catch up to the 3-2 slider. And the Astros win this one 7-6, a four-hour game. The Astros tie the series at one game apiece heading back to Houston and get their first ever World Series victory. Remember, they were swept by the White Sox in 2005. Let's take a listen to manager A.J. Hinch after the game. I mean, that's an incredible game uh, on so many levels, so many ranges of emotion. Um, if you like October baseball, uh, you know, if you like any kind of baseball, uh, that's, that's one of the most incredible games that you'll ever be a part of. Jeff, have you ever seen a postseason game as entertaining as this one? This, this has to be one of the best games that I've ever seen personally in my, in my 21 years of living. When you think of the World Series and you think of great games, you generally think of Game 6 and Game 7. So for this to happen in Game 2, that just leads for a ton of more excitement coming up in the series. It's amazing how far Justin Turner has come between the Orioles, the Mets. Now he's one of the best hitters in not only the Dodgers lineup, but the entire MLB. What has been the difference between Justin Turner as he's progressed in the major leagues? I think the key for Turner is with the Dodgers, he just feels comfortable. You give a lot of that credit to Don Mattingly, previous to Roberts, for just allowing him to go out there and play. Similar to with Jose Batista when he bounced around and then he went to the Blue Jays and kind of just found a home where they just let him, let him do his thing and, and he's really produced for them. So what's your prediction for the remainder of the World Series going forward? Um, my pick originally was Dodgers in six. I'm going to stick by that. I think it's big for the Astros, though, that they finally were able to get a win on the road. They had only had one previous win on the road in the postseason so far, and to do it in the late innings like that, I think that's a good sign for them. And they also have the pitchers to back it up. So I, I, think, I think it could go past, obviously, go to the game seven, but I would say Dodgers in six is a pretty confident pick. Well, game three moves to Houston tonight at 8 p.m. on Fox. You Darvish takes the mound for the Dodgers, and Lance McCullers Jr. has the start for the Astros. The series is tied one to one as the Dodgers look for their first championship since 1988 and the Astros look for their first ever. Jeff and I will be back next Friday to wrap up the conclusion of the World Series. For now, Chris, back to you. Thanks, Joe. That's all the time we have for this episode of WP Sports Desk. Thank you to our analysts, crew, and studio manager, Al Clark. From Studio B in Hobart Hall, I'm Chris Ternamondo, and we'll see you next time.